<laughs> okay, boys, you know gentlemen, there. it's my great privilege to introduce to you the senior vice president of market of Wallace Hardware Company, Mr. Richard Snow. <laughs> <Snow. laughs> <Snow. laughs> All right, for the next about uh, 45 minutes, if I can condense it. Whoa. Yes. It was an hour, buddy. All right. That's right. I said 45, so I condensed it down five. So, hey, we're doing better, aren't we? Okay, we've got to hurry. The reason, I'm, uh, the reason we'll be able to condense it is you've got all the stuff there in your hands, so you don't have to worry about it. Everything that's up here on this is in the sheet that you got. Uh, I'm also going to kind of modify it a little bit, hopefully next week, but in next week, fix it to where you can use it in some format on a PowerPoint to show on your iPad to show to leaders when you're talking about the program. But the question is success. Uh, there's nobody here that doesn't want to be successful. When I started out in sales, you know, my goal was to be successful. I hoped that I'd be able to attain certain goals. Lord bless me, was able to do a lot of things. Uh, when I was in the military, the same thing. You know, you always wanted to do the best that you could because you just got to spend the time, make the most out of it. And I was blessed in that. When I come over to the sales side, I was blessed to have a great team like you all to work with. And that was just, it was awesome to be able to do sales and marketing for those 25 years. And now we're just focused mainly on marketing. And so we're still working together. We're all salespeople and our goal is still the same. And that is to be successful. Now, if we, I'll have to get used to my little clicker because you're supposed to point the clicker to this thing. To the screen, okay. There we go. Now, Socrates had a wise statement. He says, know yourself. William Shakespeare in his, uh, some of his writings had another one that he used called to thine own self be true. Now, I don't remember all the plays that that was in, but anyway, those were two good things. In fact, they've been pulled over in some blogs to where some people have combined the two. Know thyself and do thyself be true. But I tell you, while these are great philosophers, the greatest lesson of all is the one that Jesus taught us in Matthew. We used it on our 85th anniversary publication. And that is, treat others as you want them to treat you. And that is the goal that we've had and tried to have under the direction of Mr. Wallace uh, for all those years now under the direction of Dole, that we want to be a distributor that really cares about people. We are a people company and we are not just looking at plain numbers. Now, who are we then as far as a distributor? Because you know another statement that he said, we can't be all things to all people. We have to pick our areas that we think that we can do well in and move on in that. He was big on commodities. And for years we were strong in commodities. We're still strong in a lot of commodities now. But you know, we, we, were, we, we were built as a commodity house. The bigger it was, harder it was to haul, the more we sold it. You know, Big John's, you remember that? When we put Big John's out, and load it through the wire house and get it out before the rest of the show was done. That kind of defined us. You know, there's two airlines that I want to use as an analogy for what I'm talking about. One of them is a big company. You all know it, many of you float it. The name of it is Delta. Delta flies everywhere. <laughs> this is their flying map and does not include the Asian market. I mean, my goodness, it looks like a spider web. When you look at the US side and when you look at the Latin American side, you look at the European side, and then you look at the Asian side. You can fly Delta just about anywhere you need to go in the world. They need to get you there or interconnect with somebody that will get you there. On the other side of it, Southwest flies mainly domestically. They do do some Latin American countries, uh, but that's it. And you look at the little red dots. That's where they fly. And there's tons of people where they fly. There are opportunities there for them to have a great market. They started off as a very small airline. Started off with three airplanes. And this was back what, in the 60s, I believe, or 70s. Anyway, as they started off, they had an idea that they wanted to bring low-cost air travel to everybody so that everyone could fly. Well, the first day out, guess what? One of the three airplanes didn't work. They only had two airplanes, and so then they had to shuffle all the schedules that they had for three airplanes into two. And they said, how are we going to turn our airplanes that quickly? They came up with a different idea from anyone else. 
Always in the past, you had a seat that was assigned, and then you'd go in and get on it. Not them. They decided to divide it into three groups. They had the A group, the B group, the C group. Guess who the A group was? First was get there. B group. Next was get there. C group, last one. And later, the C group got affectionately known as center seat because you knew you weren't going to get an aisle or a window if you came in as a C group. But they did it very well. You know, they are one of the most profitable airlines in the industry today. They're also the most reliable as far as being on time. I fly them a lot, got to drive to Nashville to do it. But I'd rather fly them, drive to Nashville if I'm going west, pick up a southwest as to go to Knoxville and then just take a chance on interconnecting and making connections. I can I never have gotten, on any of the times I've flown southwest, never have got booted off. I have never got very much delayed. One time they had a problem with an airplane and it took them about two hours to get a part from one part of Oakland, California, I believe it was, to LA. But they had that plane fixed in the air and I only, you know, it was about maybe an hour late. Beyond that, I've never been late. They'll always pride themselves on leaving on time. And if you're not there, Mr. Lynn Austin used to say, we have, a, we have a pack with the airline. If I'm there on time, then I get to fly. If I'm late, I, I miss the plane, you know? Well, that's the way it is. They board, when they shut that door, it's gone. And let me tell you, they'll pride themselves on being there anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes early at the airport. I like that. You don't have to worry about it. Traveler friendly. They try to do away with all the extra charges. We'll talk about that in a minute. Entertaining. Uh, Doyle sent me a thing. He knows I like flying there. He sent me a video that went viral the other day of one of their uh, flight attendants on giving the instructions for getting ready to land. And it was the most hilarious thing that you've ever seen. They do that kind of stuff just to make it, fly, make it fun to fly. And on top of that, you don't have to pay for snacks nor drinks. I'm talking about soft drinks. Now the others, yep, you do. But you know, they, they just do things that makes it lovable to fly. And their motto has always be, they love their customers. More importantly than anything, you know how the airlines has complained about not making money? After I believe it was the first two or three years, Southwest has made a profit every year since then. Every year since then. Now, how do they do that? They got their system, how they board their planes. They got the aircraft. When you look back here at the different airline airplanes that uh, Delta flies, that's one model I believe. I don't remember. I can't identify the number of them, but they have 737, 757, 767, 777s, and I don't know what else. Airbus, they've just placed a big order with Airbus. Southwest flies one airplane. It is the 737. They have one set of parts that they have to deal with. And not only the updates, you know, that's come along as they've improved the aircraft, but they have figured out where their place is in the market. And you say, okay, then what's this all got to do with Wallace Hardware? Wallace Hardware, like Mr. Wallace says, we can't be all things to all people, and we are not an oracle. We don't have 67 thousand SKUs. We don't have the destination places for, we have a good destination place for our shows, but, you know, we don't have the big places of Las Vegas and New Orleans and Orlando and all that place. Ours, ours, I mean, we, our dealers have to, it's hard for them to figure out how can I fly to, you know, to Pigeon Forge. Well, you know, you drive quicker to get here, uh, you know, flying down here because just the way the, the, flights, the flights work. So, you know, we are not that appealing maybe as the destination point. Neither we're an ace, we're not a true value, we are to do, uh, do it best. Who are we though? We are a distributor for stores and brands that our dealers can trust. We pride ourselves on having name brands. We don't go with Mintcraft, we don't go with all these other, you know, private label products. We pride ourselves on selling name brand products and selling them to stores that customers can trust because when they look at a pro filler supply, pro hardware, farm mark, even our rental stock program, they know it is something that is tied to more than just what they are locally. We are 42,000 SKUs versus their 60, but we have everything in our 42,000 SKU assortment that most dealers need for their stores. We don't have all the ancillary products and, and all that, but still most of our stores can be served on the items that they need out of our warehouse. And we serve not the whole nation, we don't serve the Caribbean, we don't serve 
You know, abroad anywhere, we serve parts of 11 states. That's who we are, folks. That's who we are. But you got to know what your strengths are, and you got to know the weaknesses of your competitor, and then try to adjust to what it is that you got in your assortment that will work for your dealer to accomplish what your dealer wants. Carl Stevens, who was our trainer that we used for years, and about half of you remember him, the other half probably never heard of him, he always said that you had to prepare for every call that you went to, and in order to do that, you needed to know what your customer <laughs> needed, but more importantly, you needed to know what drove him to want to have it. He would have a primary concern and he'd have a dominant buying urge and the urges were tied to those things that drive you to make emotional decisions. And so in doing that, you had to be on the same cloud, cloud brave or wavelength, if you will, that your customer was. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that we understand what our strengths are, what our customers' needs are, and make sure that when we are going to see our customers that we have what it takes to get the job done. There's one thing that you have that Oracle does not have. And many of you all will sit here and poo-poo it as being something that's not worth nothing except an advertising program, and that is far from the truth of it. But you have a brand that you can sell called Pro or Farmer. Oracle has no branded program, none. The way they go to market is, we're going to go after a good best store, we're going to go after an A store, we're going to go after some of these other co-op stores, and, what we're, and the best of all stores, if you will. And what we're going to do is say, you know, we don't care if you do advertising or whatever, we just want to sell you some product. And they'll get in and they will get their head under the, like you used to say, get the nose under the tent, and here they start and they pick up a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit somewhere else, which is the same thing that we must do as well. But the one thing they do not have, they do not have a branded store program, period. Nothing. Now, what is the key elements of the pro pro, or the pro and farm our program? You know, we used to ask our salespeople to get up and recite those. They should be top of mind. First is international identification. Identification inside the store, outside the store. If identification, you know where it is. Store modernization, we'll talk about that in a minute. Inventory management and control, group purchasing power, complete advertising and promotional programs. You say, we sell that to everybody. If your partner's there, you can get most all of that. Yes, we have lateralized most of that. Do you know where all of that came from? In 1963, I was sitting in the Kingmire Hotel and I was still in the college and still going through getting ready to graduate and eventually come back to work at Wallace. And the announcement was made. Wallace Hardware has joined the pro group. At that time, it was pro hardware it was always known by. We didn't know what we was into. What we found out was, though, that one of the key things was you had to have a store modernization department if you was going to be a pro distributor. Enter Stanley Price. In 1964, he started putting in the first of the stores. One of the first ones he ever did with, with uh, store bought fixtures was uh, gray lumber. And uh, Blake, that you might recognize that up in Bluefield, in Beckley. Yeah, gray lumber. That was the first store, and it wasn't, we wasn't even the primary distributor, but they knew that, you know, they'd heard about Stanley Price, and so they hired him. I think it took him six weeks to get that store, you know, reset with store-bought fixtures. When I came to work in the, uh, after I got through college, and uh, had been to the military, and was uh, getting ready to get married that fall, anyway, they said, you need to have a little bit of time with uh, Mr. Price. So he and I went to Murphy, North Carolina. Uh, who's co who covers that now? Okay, Todd Murphy, North Carolina. A guy named Jim Ed Hughes. He had a store over there called Hughes Supply. Was the store bought fixtures in. In the old days, NRHA would show you a cutout and a drawing on how you could make wooden gondolas out of plywood, and they would stash step back, and you would put fittings on it by taking glass, cutting it, and connecting it. JC Outlaw could cut more glass than anybody I've ever seen. I mean, we used to, that was the way it was. Now it's replaced with fitting. But all of that came about because we had decided to join Pro, and Pro said, if you're going to do that, you have got to have someone that can lay out, design, and install stores. In identification, you know you have a lot of choices on how you can identify your store. A lot of people get real excited because that Junietta Lumber and Supply sign is a 3 by 30 and it would cost today about $4,000. Most people say, I don't want to spend that kind of dollars. 
On the front here, Boiling Springs, they took a regular four by six as, long, as well as a rear board. And Tony there, that's your account. They're out there on the road and that night, thing at night pops a good mile away if you can see it because of the way the lighting uh, scenario of the white around the gray pops it out. So you can really see it, it's close there and they can put all kinds of messages on the board and it's a highly traveled highway. And that configuration there of those, just the signs alone, is probably <coughs> around $2,000. But it's a great way to, to present yourself. If you're on a limited budget, and Chuck always brings me these customers that are on limited budgets. Yep. And one of Chuck's is long as one of them. That lady is sharp as a tax that owns that organization. It's in a, sh a shopping center in Pineville, Kentucky. She's in the end of it. And if you think of the shopping center like a U and the Galaxy, uh, food Mart, which she owns on the right side, and it's as nice a grocery store you'll ever want to go into. And then they own the building where the drugstore is located on the other side. So once you get in that parking lot, you can do everything one time. But she knows the value of a dollar. She did not want to spend a lot for external signs. So she did it, and uh, what we uh, worked for her was the one that's done on signboard. Signboard will last over 12 to 15 years in weather and still be pretty sharp, as long as you keep it clean. And then she put tulip lights over the top of it, that lights it down at night, very effective. So signage doesn't have to be expensive on the outside. What we're trying to do is cut the pattern to fit the cloth on what the customer has. On the inside, whoa. What happened here, Edward? All right. <laughs> there, you go. there we are, okay. On the inside, this one is hard to see. This is actually David's uh, riches over at uh, Interstate, but when the light or the picture was taken, the light from those fixtures, or uh, light fixtures, fire down onto the sign, but you can see that it has signage uh, for the department, and then you have end cap signs that show pricing and above it what's on either aisle, and that's the way that we normally do that. I think there's another one jumped there. Maybe I can go... Well, let's try it this way. Uh, this was one that was done at Junietta Pro Lumber and Supply when we put that store in about three years ago. And the main thing that was showing here, yeah, they have the end cap signs like we was talking about with the aisle markers on right and left, uh, which utilizes that signage really well. Uh, and they also, but their, their uh, aisle marker or their departmental signs were done out of cloth. <coughs> they didn't want the traditional ones, so that was actually like a flag, if you will, that is uh, fixed with the department, department names on it and points down to the aisle where they're at. So we can customize whatever signage that we need to and adjust it. The main thing I wanted to also show on this, notice that each of their employees have the Pro Hardware logo on their, on their sweater. Uh, this is very important. You know, I think dealers need to mark within their, in themselves, uh, their stores, who their employees are. Store Modernization Group and Design, you know, this is our monthly team, and many of you have had them in their territory, to the extent that last year in 2015, we worked in 30 different stores, either setting them, resetting them, starting from scratch, or whatever. It was any size from 1,000 square feet to 20,000 square feet. The one we did down Country Farm was, one of them was 12,000 within that, con in that confine of that group, and the other one, I think, was nine. The total was 21,000. Yates is uh, 60, I believe, 60 by 200, 60 by 160, wasn't it? Which is about almost 10,000 square feet. And then, yet, we have small ones. Todd, we had one up there, about 1,500 square feet. And then we've had some. And Jim Kiefer, where are you at? You got me into one. It's Mr. Is it Smith? Is that the guy's name? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was about. 900 if it was that stretch it to be 900 you know and uh brian has not forgiven you yet on that one <laughs> not, but he, loves, he loves what they done he loves what they done in fact brian they had all their picture taken you know that's a good thing about it because usually when these guys leave they become real good friends with the folks well, seth back here i gotta watch him everywhere he goes these young girls are there and the next thing <laughs> he is already lined up to be married to about three He's so I, I think you must be a mormon you know <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Shoot, I tell you what, if they ever come together and said it's a bad situation. <laughs> but they, they love them. They love them. They just are, they do their work and uh, and they go at it. That's the, that's the primary of the team. We've got Caleb and others that have been on and rotate on and rotate off. But the whole key is here that we can do the job. It starts with the plan. You can't build a house if you don't have a plan. You can't build anything without a plan. And the more detailed it is, the better off you, you will be. This is one of the more detailed plans that we did on a model store. The implementation process, though, involves you. And I've identified in there most of the steps necessary to do a new store or a remodeled store, and everybody needs to be involved. Guys, if there's one thing that we need more from you all than anything, is your all involvement. Maybe we haven't been good enough on communicating to you when we're going to a store or meeting with a store, but we want you involved. Because if you're not involved, you don't know what's going on, number one, and you know the customer a lot better than us, and then after we leave there, all the things that's got to be executed, you're the one that's going to have to make a lot of that happen. So we've detailed out 20 items. The 21st one is to execute a grand opening. But all, there's 20 items that's listed on that checklist that is things that we need to, everybody know where they're at. And one of the next projects that we're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks, three weeks, and maybe right after the show, we'll have, you know, whose responsibility is involved in each of these steps. So that when we get done, everybody will uh, not have their hair pulled out. Because many of us don't have much more hair to pull out. Do we care? All right. Here's another thing we need your help on. If this store is going to be a pro or farm or store, we need you all to fill out the what we call the RIAN sheet. We have to send that to pro, and you'll find people that call us all the time and say, why am I not listed to pro? It's because everything on that has not been checked off. If there's one responsibility that you do have, and that is right here, the responsibility of making sure that sheet is, cleaned, is filled out and sent to Shirley so she can get into pro. One of, the, one of the things that hangs it up sometimes is it may be waiting on signage. We got one dealer up in Kentucky. I love him to death. Ernie? I wouldn't buy whiskey. I'll tell you what. Tell him just go ahead and screw the thing up, and then he can unscrew it when he gets ready to paint the wall and then screw it back up, you know? I'm about there. Yeah, because, uh, you know, he's not, he's not on the list, and he's a great, great dealer, you know? And he's doing well, doing very well. Inventory management. That is number three. Inventory management. Once you build and got the plan of what the business is supposed to be like, then you got to put product in there. And the thing that we start with is the anchor in, the, in all the stores that we either remodel or that we uh, set new is our easy starts. Because the easy starts are the vendors that are separated out by department around which you merchandise everything else. Criteria for that available all year round and mo mainly these programs are almost like a show program that you can do any time in the year. Has a limited SKU count so that you can have good placement but not break the bank. Discounted anywhere from 10 to 50 percent from what regular price is. 90 day terms on it all so that when the dealer gets it he doesn't immediately have to pay for it. He's got a few days here, a few weeks that he can start to get sales before he has to turn loose the money. It'll clean up his category, <laughs> updates his bin tags because we want to send the tags with the right pricing to him, and it has limited investment on his part and it provides sales opportunity for him to get to move it before he actually has to sell it. At the show, we're going to have this is the uh, picture of the one that we did in uh, April, but it'll be looking <laughs> different. We're not going to put the trust up on that one there. We were trying to demonstrate what the Pro Builder Supply assortment should look like, but it contained lots of easy starts. This one will be laid out very similar, except there'll be more wall sections around it to get all the easy starts there. We're planning to have about 80 easy starts displayed here, which is most all the ones that we've got. Irwin will not because it can't ship. Right now they are in an atrocious situation because of their warehouse software pro pro problems that they're trying to get done. But for most part, we're trying to include almost all of them. You have asked at the regional sales meeting for some multi-vendor sets. Eight-foot cleaning assortment has already been done, and that will combine with the other cleaning items that we have to make a very nice department. Scott and Bobby and Steve are working to put together a 16-foot pet assortment that will include, above, among other things, your black gold dog food. How many of you have sold black gold dog food? 
Okay, where is Fred at? Did he go out? He's on the phone. Yeah, he. Okay, let me tell you about Fred. One time he was talking to me about something. He said, Do you remember what Carl Stevens used to say? He said, Don't care how good you talk about a dog food, if a dog don't like it, it ain't no good. That was about the words he said. If you've ever fed this dog food, those dogs will leave everything else and go to it. My neighbor has a dog named Honey. And she comes over, it belongs to the Yoders that have Yoders Country Market. She comes over and visits with us all the time, to the extent she wants to come into the house, sleep at night, about three o'clock she'll decide it's time to go back. I have to get up, let her go back out. I always check to see what shoe she has picked up or what sock or whatever else, because she's still in, she's a golden retriever and she's a chewer. But anyway, I saw Marion yesterday at the store. She told me, says, hey, I've got some chicken dumplings left from yesterday's special. I said, I'll be there and get them, you know? So anyway, she said, by the way, where can I buy some black gold? What kind of dog food do you, you, you feed honey? And I said, we're feeding black gold. Feed her black gold. She said, where can I get it? I said, well, I don't know, but I'll bring you back because I owe them some stuff. They give me stuff all the time. And she said, my dog won't eat what we've been feeding. He just leaves it there. She's coming over to your house to eat. You know, she likes to eat like gold dog food or whatever it is that you're selling. I'm telling you, it is a great dog food. If you ain't tried it, which one is that that you use, Scott? It's a performance plant. It's like black bags. Black bag. It is good stuff. Anyway, we're going to include that as part of the set. Probably about a four-foot set of dog food because we have never, we always talk about needing to sell it, but we need to show you how you can display it and sell it. Okay? Moving on. Oh, by the way, uh, Ed, where's Ed at? Ed stepped out. Ed had stepped out. Okay. He is wanting us to look at a new four-foot battery and flashlight. Because what's the best-selling flashlight that you sell right now? What brand? Interstate. Outback. Outback. Yes, we're out of We are, but we're getting more. You know, <laughs> Outback, Outback is the flashlight, and so we're going to have a combination of Outback as well as Duracell, Cell Max, and Everready batteries, you know, on a four-foot set. It'll be a multi-vendor. You all have asked for that stuff at the last regional meeting, and you're going to get it. We've got several new vendor assortments, including the one from Monterey that you saw here today. And that is an excellent company to deal with. Inventory management. My store's got to be tagged with all the SKU numbers and UPC numbers if we're going to be able to move product from them to our system and through our system. And they need to be loaded into the dealer's BOS system. Dealer salespeople. That's something that you've got to be responsible to coordinate with Anthony. So we get downloads in there and they can start ordering the product. You know, that was one of the complaints I think we had uh, at Burlington or somewhere where we were trying to get all the numbers in. So, you know, that is something we have to coordinate to make happen because if we don't, we are not able to automatically ship product in there. You realize we got 489 dealers that are registered dealers placing orders on order entry systems and POS systems at Wall Server. We've got a total of about a thousand dealers that are in what we call our partners program. And uh, so, you know, about half of those dealers are now placing orders directly, electronically, mm -hmm. you know, with us. Either through some ordering device they've got, there are systems that they have, and we can communicate with anybody that can take a spreadsheet and get the load field downloaded into. Group purchasing power. Pro group as a whole, 3.2 billion. And that's just the that's just in the 29 distributors that we're talking about that are part of the group. We have a thousand partner program stores at Wallace. 99 of them are pro stores, and that is a woeful short number. There is about almost 600 of partner plus stores alone. If you had 600 partner plus stores, and those are supposed to be your best stores, what would be a good number that we all have as pro stores? It's a question I ask you. We only have nine Farmark programs, five, nine Farmark stores. That program is sucking wind work more than any, and probably it's our own fault. And we're going to try to look at ways that we can try to uh, help improve that. We have to understand, and I guess that was one of my big uh, misunderstandings, a lot of the Farmark type, type stores <laughs> are not hardware stores. Uh, we have uh, John Decker, we got an account up there in your area that we think we're going to be able to, we've sold the equipment, we're going to set it, and they're interested in a lot of product, but all the product that they're wanting 
has nothing to do with plumbing, has nothing to do with electrical. They don't do any of that. And uh, you took me to one down there, Boss, but that Boss Brothers, the name right? Used to call on uh, Doyle's, used to call on part of their family members. Yeah. You know, they don't any, it's, it's all related to farm, farm, lawn, and garden. So we, we need to really look at overhauling that. I'll take responsibility for us not doing better, okay? Group purchasing power also carries over to our partners program. Whenever you're signing up a dealer, you need to go over all the details of this program, not just say, I'm going to put them on there. You all see how few sheets we get back that are signed. You see, guys, we set ourselves up for a failure if we don't do all the details. Go over that buyer's program so they make sure they understand it. And then when they see, you know, for example, one thing we're trying to encourage them now, I don't care what else you do. And the co-ops are going to tell them this. Whatever you do, make sure you're able to pay your bills on time. Because if you don't, you're losing your rebate. On top of that, you're going to get a service charge, you know, when it goes, you know, to that next statement of role. So if you lost your rebate and you got a service charge over two days, it don't make sense. Because you've already lost, what is that, six and a half, five and a half percent? Time you count what your rebate lost and what the service charge added on was. So we always need to emphasize the importance of paying because that's when they're going to, and people say sometimes, I didn't get much rebate. Why? Because it didn't pay on time. They need to understand that. Group purchasing power is really nails in when we come to the show time. This is our last show. Our show has expanded greatly as we move to Lacan, and you don't have to take second, you don't have to take second seat to nobody on that. Our show is not a median square foot like it is at Orville and Atlanta. I understand that. But I can tell you one thing, dealers can come here and they can work hard for a day and a half, two days, and they still won't see everything they probably need, but it will be a lot easier and better than trying to do it at Orlando. We try to bring the best vendors that they can come and really make money with, and Eddie has over and over emphasized that today. Advertising and promotion programs, the marketing campaign for 2017, similar to what it was in 2017. 16. Basically, it revolves around the circular that gives them the ability to deflect. One thing that we're changing a lot this year is that we are going to have templates made up to flex the front page and the back page, no front page, excuse me, in categories that it will be easier for dealers to do. You know, you have a three item flex, but we can, if we do it ourselves as far as setting up the template, we can cheat and get more than the space of three hours. We actually get the space at least for four hours. And we'll set that because many of the dealers that are outdoor power equipment in the spring, they need to be advertising whatever brand it is. We have a lot of steel dealers, have echo dealers, Husqvarna dealers. And they can set a good spring presentation, come back in the fall, set a good fall presentation. You can also do things like your paint. Every dealer that is a pro, uh, uh, a Glidden or a Porter dealer. You can fix all if that's their primary brand. Whatever brand they have and they're mixing paint, it ought to be in every circle. I defy you to find a low circle, at least I haven't seen one in years that comes to my house that does not have paint on it. And most of the time, guess what page it's on? Front page. You know, they continually remind them. And it isn't a big deal. It's just saying $5 off, $7 off. Sometimes they have a, a little hotter deal. But, you know, our dealers need to have paint flexed in. And with Glidden and Porter, we're covering the flex charge because, you know, that's part of the ad program to do it. We have the, all the promotional programs that are associated with it, the mobile circular and coupon program. We don't have time to go through all of that today. The other thing I want you to understand is the best circular program is going to be one that's also tied to the dealer website. I didn't get up here when Regina and uh, Anthony were looking at it. Did they show you Junietta's uh, website? Yep. Yep. Okay, Jun Junietta, and you notice on there they have a the circle look. They put their circle on every time. Mm -hmm. This is something that we need to have our dealers doing because it says something to the public as people are going on there and they'll start looking for it. All of you in your packets got a advertising agreement just like what you see here for each of your dealers. Now these have been mailed to the dealers that are active advertisers. Some of you had some packets that had rubber bands around them. 
the rubber bands are there because that they were not active last year and you need to carry that program to them okay so if you had a folder that has a dealer's name in there you you are responsible to go show them and talk to them about that program and explain it. some of the things that you need to understand is we put all of this on and we allow them to be able to uh, break it down into 12 equal payments and that way it's not a cash flow out that's heavy at any one time this one is Fayetteville Lumber and Supply they're one of our best dealers as far as advertising I think they're if you added all those up they put out about 150,000 surfers a year in 10 events they do it right if you uh, look at the farm mart it's going to be very similar uh, has a little bit more opportunity on the flex side of it we need to understand too about the value added services that comes to being a part of the pro dealer and farm mart dealer program. There are a lot of people, things in here that's really good. For example, one, and I had her call that one out. Uh, I said it did. Yeah, well, passed right over. NRHA membership. NRHA membership comes to our dealers and we allow them to be a group member for $100. That is over half less than what it costs as far as a, uh, being able to uh, be a, a full-fledged member. With that, you get the best training program that's available to our stores. Any, any store that's a member of that can get a log on that surely assigns to them. They can go on and they can do all the tests. Uh, Seth, if you, did you take that? Okay, you know, you just go on and you do your lesson and it checks over uh, for your test and then you get the report back. Uh, John, uh, he was here a while ago, he had, yeah, he's standing in the corner back there. How can I miss you, buddy? If not, wait, he's going to get married. When is that? Two weeks? Saturday. Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you. But anyway, you know, you did, uh, you did those tests, you know, went through them and it's a great way to get a quick overview about products in the department. And for new employees, it's a no-brainer. Uh, also, the cost of doing business study that I had her to pull out. Whenever we're talking to customers that's having financial issues, they always say, do you have statistical data that can help us do an analysis? I just got that one from the NRHA for 2016. It's the cost of doing business. About 800 stores have provided their information in, and it tells what their cost in all the categories, uh, either by square foot or by size of store is. But the most important value-added service is the ones that's sitting right here in this room. <coughs> the other day, are you cheering them or are you telling me to get down? No. Okay, no. all right. Just make sure. That's me what I'm doing. <laughs> you see, uh, where is uh, my boy Mike Miller? Right there. I was talking to one of your customers late yesterday afternoon. And of course, we've been trying to work with them on converting from do it best to walk to us. He, his heart wants to do it, but he is the most reluctant person to turn loose, you know. And he, he's not been convinced totally yet of the value. And anyway, I've got to go ahead and try to uh, work with him on that. But he said, you know, one of the things I need to do, make, I need to make this decision before the end of October. I said, why? He says, because I hadn't seen a do it best man, but maybe one time a year for the last six years until somebody at Epicor leaked out the fact that they may be switching to Wallace Hardware. It came back to the do it best guy. He says, they're knocking my door down. I've seen them, you know, about once a month ever since. And now they have come to offer him two years on about $80,000 worth of inventory to reset his store. I said, well, at least... You know, I'm glad that we brought you some extra value if you decide not to come with us. You know, I'm going to put the guilt trip on you, though. You know? you know, you are the difference. You're in the store every week. You are the difference. Starts right there. You send Eddie a list of prospects by category. Eddie's got those. Those will be top of mind of who you're trying to go at on all the things, including Pro Farm Mart, Paint the whole nine yards. Free merchandising the store. <coughs> it ends here. 
And that's where the measurement that counts. You take a prospect and you've got that person over as a store, and then how are they doing? And what bothers me is all the white spaces that are on there. Those white spaces are inactive stores, people that are not participating in promotions and trying to really do all the things that Pro can bring to them. And you have that in your folder too, that is broken out of the ones that are advertising and the ones that are not active stores. We need you to target in on that. You've got all the tools here to make a good decision and develop a plan. So how do you get to that goal? We used to have something called a dealer development process, and it started from the first of the prospect as far as just trying to group them, until you got over to the last where you had a customer that was a satisfied customer and would recommend the program to someone else, and it was about 49 steps. One of these days, we're going, not one of these, very soon after the show, I hope they'll think that. But that helps you get from there to there in the color group. The color brand represents those that have found full satisfaction with the pro program. Now, how are we going to get there? We're going to do it together. The little, what is Thomas the Train? What is that he thinks? He thinks he can get there? I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Sometimes, Mike, we're just on the other side of that curve trying to get there with twins. We're going to keep after it until we get there. You know, we're not going to give up. Same way with all the other stores that you guys have got that we're working on, and we've got a ton of them right now. But we do it together. We will be successful either as a team or we will lose as a team. And I am not interested in losing, and I don't think you are either. So guys, we're here to help you. Good luck on any of this stuff. You can see us during the meeting session, uh, dinners or whatever, we'll be glad to talk about them. And keep this because it has got an outline of an overview of what it takes to get somebody from just starting with you to the time that you get them happy working with you. Okay? Yes. All right. Before, yeah, I don't know comments on it, but the buyer's guide, how about handing those out? We did bring enough up for each person to get one. And uh, all of you guys that are out of town are supposed to be able to get all of yours in your in your package, we'll check with Linda to make sure that they're in the boxes. Uh, but that's the pre-show buyer's guide that you can share. And one will be mailed to everybody that is on the max approved list. And then you've got 10 in your box that you can use and hand out. Be careful where you hand them out. Yes. I talk to Linda. She's printing things as fast as they can. If there's any not done, it's just going to be the local guys. Uh, Smiley, AC, Greg, and come in and pick them up. So can they go ahead and pick them up tonight after we get through? Can we pick them up this evening? Just hoping to have at least the out of town guys. I'm not getting my books. Okay. All right. Any more questions? No. I'm all thing between you and dinner. Where's Eddie at?